you know, it's so funny you mentioned uh, compound media because I'm I'm sort of friendly-ish with Dave Landau. I've interviewed him a few times, and in fact, oh, okay. anyone great. listening to this, Dave was on the previous episode by the time this comes out. But uh, yeah, this November I was going to go to New York to okay. fucking, uh, and I was I was allowed to. Well, I might have misread the, the message. I don't think they were going to have me as a guest on the Kumi show, but they were going to let me like watch it live. I was I yeah. was invited to be on a fair one and, and all that stuff. And then but, fucking America decided to turn into the Wild West with this fucking AIDS bomb that's gone off. So there's, there's no way I'm going. That's funny. I, I got to go on Kumia's show, and uh, that was a blast. And then about a year later, I got booked to do Chip Chipperson's show, uh, Jim Norton's show up there. So I just shot E-Rock and No, and also Dave and, and Anthony, and I just said, hey, guys, I'm going to be in New York. I'm going to swing by the studio. You know, I don't know what's going on. And, you know, I, Eric just said, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll see you then. So I went up there and I just sat. They have like these little stands set up. You can just watch the show. And I just sat there and was just going to watch the show. And then uh, Anthony's like, who are these podcasts? So they brought me on. I wasn't even booked. So you could just kind of work your way onto the, uh, onto the show if you're smart about it, I guess. What's uh, Anthony Cumia like in person? Because, again, like I interviewed him uh, barely. And... Uh, I thought he was really funny, but I would say he's kind of intimidating in person because he seems nuts. My experience with Anthony, and I don't have a ton of experience with him, but him and I actually did catch a train together to go down to Jim Norton's show. So we did the show together and then traveled together down in the subway and then went to Jim's show. So I got to hang out with him one-on-one, -on -one, just him and I. He was the exact person that I've been listening to on the radio for years. Everything about him. Just see, he's just, he's a super cool guy. People are recognizing him. He's just like, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Just really chill and just a funny guy. Uh, same person that I've always heard. Well, from one uh, podcast in Italian to another that I got to ask you about, uh, the infamous Adam Carolla. Uh, yeah. It, it's crazy. Like, I, I do listen to his show, but it's crazy to see what's kind of happened where, like, a few years ago, he was bigger than Joe Rogan. Uh, now he's not only been overtaken by Joe Rogan, but it really seems like he's slipped a lot. And uh, I don't know if you follow any of those Corolla people on Twitter, but it's kind of leaked out that uh, Corolla doesn't share the wealth. Mm -hmm. And that while that show has all this money coming in, like millions and millions, and it is the Adam Corolla show, so he would be the draw. Yeah. The rest of his show staff and behind the scenes crew are making very little money to the point that Gina Grad, his news reader, also yeah, has a second yeah. and third job. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's like so um what's your take on the sort of changing slash downfall of the Adam Carolla show and the the latest uh, revelations? All right. Well I didn't hear about those revelations, but it doesn't surprise me. Adam Carolla has kind of formed a niche. He was a morning jock in LA and a bunch of other markets. And he was a little bit right leaning, but he didn't get too much into politics. He has now gone full on, you have to be pretty right leaning to based on the guests that he brings on and the conversations that he has in order to enjoy him. So he's definitely turned off a whole segment of the audience that Joe Rogan doesn't do that. Joe Rogan talks to right, left, he's kind of in the middle. And there's no one who's going to get too turned off unless you're crazy nut job. So Adam Carolla has kind of placed himself in a place where he's not going to be Joe Rogan. With that said, yes, Adam was the biggest show because he was very early to start a podcast. I think it was 2009 after he got fired and he started the podcast. So he was like number one for a long time. I bet he has more downloads now than he did five years ago, even though he's down on the charts. Podcasting is just blown up. Everyone listens to podcasts all the time now. So I, I would imagine he has millions of listeners and they take in a, a shit ton of money. So I'm sure he's happy with where he's at. Now, as far as what he's paying people, and this, is, this actually goes back to the old radio days. Now, Adam Carolla is a radio guy, so he knows how this works. These gigs are jobs that everybody wants. Being the newsreader, Gina Grad, or being Bald Brian, who's hitting the, the drops, or Dawson, who's doing the reads, these jobs are coveted, and therefore, you don't have to pay people as much because there's so many people who want it and so many people who can do it. Gina Grad might not make a ton of money from Adam Carolla, but we all know her name which means she can go do appearances. She can write a book. She can do, you know, start uh, other sideshows, 
do whatever she wants. So they're getting the, um, they're getting a lot of publicity from being on the show. You don't have to pay people as much to be on the show. And it's like, that's kind of how capitalism works. It's like, well, you make all this money. Like, yeah, because if I left the show, it wouldn't exist. That's why I make all the money. And, you know, Bald Brian leaves. Everyone loves Bald Brian, but they'd get a different person to hit the sound effects. It'd still be the Adam Carolla show. Yeah, but my my big issue with his show these days is, like, I we I only tend to do two to three episodes a month because okay. I'm fucking busy. But then again, I'm not making the money he does from his show. He does he does five shows of the main thing a week plus others. I don't know how that's fucking possible to have content for that amount of shows. Like, like I'm I can already see you getting bored by me. No, and I know the answer. Twenty minutes, you know. I know the answer to this. It's that he repeats himself a lot, and we documented this. We did a review of the Adam Carolla show, and I'm a longtime Adam Carolla listener. I don't listen as much these days, but longtime listener, and he just repeats the same stories over and over and over again. And like you said, he's doing five days a week the Adam Carolla show, but he's also doing a show with Mark Garagas. He's doing a show with uh, Dr. Drew. He's got all these other shows going too. So he doesn't even remember what show he's on. He'll repeat himself. Yeah, I was just talking to Drew about this thing, blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know. We just heard that over here. And then we heard it again over here. It's like, it's, he's a little oversaturated. I would agree with you on that. And he did an episode about a week or two ago with Jay Moore was a guest. Yeah, I and that. it was fucking. It was just painful because Jay Moore was either, you know, a bit high or, or on something or nervous. And it's like he's rambling through all these impressions back to back, which was a mistake because then you kind of notice all his impressions sort of sound the same and they're all from the 70s. <laughs> then yeah. he goes to Gina Grad and starts talking about how he wants to bang her. Yeah. And, and a lot of us would like to, but you don't say that on the air. And right. it's just, it's like, this is complete shit. And uh, it's, it, but then again, the joke's on me because I'm going to keep listening. Well, the thing that, and um, who was the guy who used to do uh, DAG, David Allen Green, or is it David Allen Greer? Or Greer. Yeah, Greer. Used to do his show all the time. He doesn't do it anymore. And I think the same thing happens with him and Joe Coy and some of these regular guests that come on where they get stuck in these impressions. And Adam wants to keep that going for way too long. And again, I think it goes back to his old radio days. Like, we got to fill time. We got to stretch time. We got to get to the break. Let's just keep doing this, keep doing this. And they'll just run a bit into the ground. And it gets really hard to listen to. And I heard that same interview you're talking about. And yeah, I'm just like, can we just talk like normal people for a minute? This is so annoying. Yeah, it's like surely he's got Chris Farley stories we'd like to hear. Right, yeah, there's probably other things to talk about. Yeah, but Carola's got that thing. It's like when you're arguing with your girl and uh, she fucking makes a great point and then you know that she knows she's made a great point and then 40 minutes later she's still talking and then you start going, I think OJ Simpson was right, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Where, where's that fucking ashtray? 